We will soon have all the official information regarding the Google Pixel 9 lineup, but the company's done its best to get all of the, <laughs> of the leaked information out ahead of time for us to go over. And what, it's, what seems clear to me, in addition to the company kind of shifting marketing focus by having one release of their devices for the year, which alleviates a lot of concern pricing-wise and some awkwardness in the product lineup. It also seems clear to me that with the Google Pixel 9 series, that the company is going to try to reinsert itself into the S-tier flagship conversation alongside the S24 Ultra and the iPhone of the day. And the really the last time that we had that kind of direct competition was the Pixel 4 XL, the last time that they had the top-of-the-line Snapdragon in a phone, the last time they just spec'd it out all the way, and the last time that they also, pricing-wise, were a similar to the S, the Galaxy S series of the day and the iPhone of the day. And it didn't work out well the last time. And, you know, Google kind of had, kind of went through an ad- identity crisis after the Pixel 4 XL. It didn't know where it wanted to be. Would it be a company that offered value? Would it be a company that offered, you know, these premium devices, but then hoped that their clean version of Android and superior cameras carried the day? That's less of a focus now as the company and others now seem to to look towards AI to do that since the cameras pretty much across the board have caught up. It's more subjective than it used to be on, say, like the Pixel 2 XL, where that was a, you know, just you could point to it and see that that's a significantly better camera than everything else being offered. Not the case anymore, right? So it's not that that Google could stand up there and crow about their computational photography. Now they try to do it with AI, but they went off into the wilderness a little bit. And I didn't necessarily disagree with the strategy. The Pixel 5 was saying, like, you know, maybe our software extras can provide value, but we're going to charge less money. It's going to be a less powerful device. The Pixel 6, they say, you know what, let's go to our own architecture. Let's, you know, build off of Exynos. Let's, let's have our tensor uh, that, that, that is its own, its own structure, and we can add some custom stuff to that. And so they've kind of gone that way, and they've kind of developed the design through the years to the point where they got to the Pixel 8 Pro, which I thought, if you handed me a Pixel 8 Pro at the end of the year and said, this is the device you have to use for all of 2024, I would be perfectly happy with that. For all the disagreements that I've had with Google over the past year, For all of the overshadowing, I think, that happened on this particular device, because you had situations with the Pixel Fold, you had situations with the Pixel 8, was it going to get Gemini Nano, was it not? Pixel 8a, same deal, you know, same prices. There was a lot of noise surrounding Google, and a lot of it self-generated, you know, so some own goals that uh, that Google had throughout the year. But it overshadowed the fact that through all of that, the Pixel 8 Pro was really one of the better devices of the year. And you could talk to me about raw performance. You could talk to me about how it doesn't game as well as the other ones. I get that. But the entire package that you get, seven years of software support, really good performance with the Tensor 3. The heat management problem is no longer an issue with the Tensor 3. Decently specced, beautiful display, the super actual display really solved a lot of the problems that I had with the Google Pixel devices of years past. Those just kind of drab displays, just not really where it was. Now I think Google makes some of the best displays on the market, certainly on par with what Samsung's been shipping the last year or so. So I thought there's a lot to like there. I also thought that the Pixel 8 Pro was the sweet spot price-wise. It had enough of the performance. It had enough of the feel, enough of the design, Beautiful display, good battery life now on this device, all those things, but it still was just a step down from the S24 Ultra, right? S24 Ultra, you're paying 1200 1300 $1,400 for a well-appointed one. This one, for the majority of its life cycle, you can find for around 900 bucks. From what we can tell, from what the rumors seem to be, not going to be the case anymore. You're not going to find the Pixel 9 Pro XL on sale for the majority of his life for eight, nine hundred bucks. And that's going to kind of creep up to the thousand, eleven hundred dollar range if you want to match it up spec wise with the S24 Ultra or the S25 Ultra when that's released next year. Now, they're going to give you some more stuff 3,000 nits, you know, 16 gigs of RAM. I thought I saw there's a bunch of things on there Tensor 4, beautiful display. There's a bunch of things that they're offering there at the same time. But my question is this, does Google belong back at the table 
with the top tier flagships if they're charging that kind of money. And a lot of people are going to say no because of the raw performance thing. They're going to look at benchmarks. They're going to look at the Tensor. Uh, they're going to look at the Tensor Four and say it just doesn't stack up against the Snapdragon Eight Gen Three. And that's all fair conversation to be had. You know, the Tensor Four might do better at gaming than the Tensor Three. There are some things that Google might try to build around, like AI. You know, I, I hope they don't charge for the AI, like is the rumor. I hope that the 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 Samsung model of or, and the Apple model eventually of paying you know twenty dollars a month, like we do for Chat GTP and whatever else, it doesn't come to pass. I hope they include it with the device. I think that was a really differentiating factor back in the day when they offered you know they had these beautiful photos and beautiful cameras, and then they offered unlimited storage. Right. Remember when that was a thing where you could get that that Google Drive or whatever it was, Google Photos would allow you to store the photos to the cloud where you had that. It kind of offset the fact that this only shipped with you know 128 gigs or 64 gigs or whatever it was at the time. You didn't feel so bad about that because you could take the original photos and store them in the cloud. You know, what's going to be the value factor here that gets people to kick over? Because, yes, I understand there will still be somewhat of a price difference as, as, as Samsung really just ups the price of the S line. You know, it's $1,400 basically for one now. Next year, it might be $1,500 if you want 256 or 512 gigs of storage. So there's still going to be some value to be said here. There's some value to be had in, in comparison to the S24. But it's not going to be what it used to be. You know, there's going to have to be more in terms of spec for spec when you charge $1,100 for a phone. So, you know, it, 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 it's still to be seen, going to have the device in hand, but it's going to be an interesting conversation to see if Google's up for that challenge again, because the last time they really weren't, you know, the, the last time that you had this, this conversation, you know, they would come out later in the year, it wouldn't be, it would be as powerful, yes, but it would be a slightly older chip at that point. They had the camera, but it just, for whatever reason, it didn't work out when Google was trying to go toe to toe with the others at a similar price point. Now they've kind of gone off, found themselves, took them a few years to get here design-wise, took them a few years to kind of dial the Tensor into the point where Tensor 1 and Tensor 2, forget about it. Tensor 1 and Tensor 2 had no business being in, in a flagship plus $1,000 device. That's kind of what made the Pixel Fold so ag aggravating, is that it really didn't belong there because of the heat problems, because of the lack of power and all the rest of it. Tensor 3, different story. I, would, I paid, you know, whatever for this device. Pretty good. Tensor 4, we'll see. But it should be, it, it should just be known that with AI, with the seven years of support, with everything else, will you consider Google back at the table, spec for spec, blow for blow, with something like an S24 Ultra or an iPhone 15 Pro Max when you're looking at similar price ranges? Because with 900 bucks, you get a pass for some things, right? You know, you kind of look on a device a little bit more favorably when it's coming in three, four hundred dollars cheaper than its main competition. Not going to be the case anymore. Google's going to be asking big money, and with big money becomes big responsibility. So, you know, it, Google really hasn't proven it's been up to that in the past. The Pixel Eight Pro would have been up to that. I think it was a really good device. I really like it. But now it'll be the Pixel Nine Pro XL's turn to see if it can go up against the big boys, and come out ahead. And if you like Pixel, there's going to be a lot to like about that device. Looks like an impressive camera set once again. Looks like a decent build once again. You're getting that seven years of support. You're getting a clean version of Android with a Material U. There's lots to like on the Pixel 9 Pro XL, just like there was lots to like on the Pixel 8 Pro. But is that going to be enough when you're charging $1,100? for your device. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-licious day.